Hi, my name is Jenna. My name is Maria. And my name is Zena. And we're students at the City of Leicester College. We are reporting for the BBC School Report. Our subject is on how social media impacts and affects the youth of today. We interview students and staff at our college to see what their views are on social media. Hello everyone, I'm Mara reporting live from, for BBC School Report. On set I have Miss Foster, the deputy head of TCOC, who's going to share her views on social media and how it affects us. So hello Miss Foster. Good morning. Do you regularly use social media? I do. I use Facebook um, and I try and use Snapchat <laughs> successfully um, and WhatsApp. 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 Okay. Uh, Hi everyone, I'm Jana and I'm here with Romana from the City of Leicester College. I'm here to interview her about how she uses social media. So Romana, how often do you use social media? Um, I use it every day. I use it during school um, with my school iPad and then at school with my laptop and my phone. So basically every day. And how, how many hours a day do you use social media? Um, I would say about six, seven hours. Mm -hmm. So like quite a long time. Quite often, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what kind of social media apps do you have that you like use regularly? Um, Snapchat, like that's my most. Mm -hmm. um, Instagram, Facebook, like most, most of, of the social media yeah. ones. Yeah. And um, if a stranger messaged you um, asking for details, what would you say to them? Um, firstly, if a stranger messaged me, I wouldn't reply. Mm -hmm. Usually, I wouldn't reply. Yeah. But um, I would check their profile just to see who it is, like how old they are, like where they found me from and things like that yeah. and then um, if it was someone that I knew or I knew of I'd probably reply and be like oh hi but I wouldn't I wouldn't ever give out my details or mm -hmm. anything due to like safety and yeah, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and lastly how do you think social media affects kids our age and the youth of today um, I think it's like a huge distraction especially for like students because when like for example if we're um, revising and our phone's there we always want to check it and we yeah. constantly want to like see where it is mm -hmm. and if we come to school without our phone it's like a piece of it is missing or something yeah. so I feel like we're really dependent on our phones mm -hmm. but there's nothing Hi guys, I've got Aisha on set with me, she's a sixth former at the City of Leicester College and she's going to share her views So hello Aisha Hello How often do you use social media? I use social media every single day How many hours? Um, so I use it for about two, three hours a day. That's alright. What social media apps do you have? I have Twitter, I have Instagram, I have Snapchat, I have Facebook. Ooh, and what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm going to give you a scenario. If a, mess a stranger messaged you asking for your personal details, uh, your phone number, your school address, what would you expect to be? I'd completely ignore that stranger and I'd block, block that stranger out of my contact list. Imagine they threatened you saying they know where you live. I would obviously block them and then I'd report this. I'd tell my family first and then I'd probably tell the police yeah, because this is a serious matter on this thing. What age do you think students in our school should have social media? To be honest, I think after 16. After 16? Yeah. So do you think social media overall is good or bad? I think we I think it is bad because like younger kids are a lot more exposed to you know underage um, things so like pornography grooming. grooming all these things that children are exposed to and it's not good like before it didn't happen but now they are a lot aware of these things and something is to have like something, we need to tackle these problems because it's not good. Thank you for your help. Oh, okay. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Jenna Trevelli reporting for the BBC School Report. Today I'm here with Miss Jones, who is a teacher at the City of Leicester College. She's recently been teaching students about a young girl, Kaylee Hayward, who was seriously affected by social media. Miss Jones, what are your views on social media and how it impacts young people? I think social media is an amazing resource and we can use it in a really positive way. Um, to inspire others and to encourage people to do things that they might not normally do. Mm. However, we need to use it wisely, same as anything else, yeah. and make sure that students are aware of the dangers. Mm. Um, that's the most that any of us can really do. Mm. And um, what do you think is an acceptable age for children to start using social media? Uh, as a parent, as well as a teacher, I don't think that students should be using social media until they're around the ages of 12 or 13. Mm. Um, and in that way, I mean that where they can communicate with others. I wouldn't like them to see them having sort of 
Facebook accounts, etc. Yeah, until a lot older. Definitely, yeah. And could you just tell us a little bit about um, Katie Hayward and how she was impacted by social media? Yeah, um, Katie Hayward was um, contacted on Facebook um, by someone she didn't know, mm -hmm. sent a message, which if you don't keep your securities tight on Facebook, anybody can do that. They mm -hmm. can send you a message. Uh, and within that first 10 minutes, she accepted sort of the, the message, the mm -hmm. friend's request, if you like, and then went on to have a relationship with this person via her mobile phone, gave away her mobile number, her contact details, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, from that point on, the, the, Luke Harlow and Stephen Beeman be, befriended Kaylee, and um, she was groomed, and by this we mean that she was made to feel like these were the only people who understood her mm -hmm. and would look after her, and, and she wanted to be an adult, and they wanted to treat her like an adult. Um, she unfortunately went to a location which we would always discourage all of our students to do anyway but she went to a location and, and that's where uh, her life was ended 15 mm -hmm. days after receiving a, a friend's request yeah and um, finally what would you say to anyone who's maybe in a, a situation sort of like that mm. well we'd, first thing I'd like to say is mo lots of people think that it's just girls that, yeah. be aff that are affected by grooming and, mm. and Facebook messaging and inappropriate images etc mm. that is not the case um, here at the City of Leicester we are teaching students that boys are affected as well and we teach them about um, Brett, Brett Bednar who was also affected with social media mm. but through online gaming. Mm. I would also say that we have a great, I believe, we have a great system here for students to be able to talk to teachers, mentors, counsellors, nurses, teach, you know, everybody really, their form tutors are a great support network, so mm -hmm. just encourage people to look out for the signs that mm -hmm. they've learned from the Kayleigh Hayward story mm -hmm. uh, and report anything they find suspicious. Definitely. All right, thank you. Thank no you. Um, so I, I don't use Twitter. Oh, you don't use Twitter? No, I haven't really figured out how to use it, to be honest, but I do use Facebook a lot. So I know you're an English teacher. Yes. So how do you think like tabloid news and social media affects your students' behaviour? Um, that's a good question. I think I, I've, I, I think young people read newspapers less than they did before. Mm. They rely on social media for yeah. news, and um, much as I don't like Donald Trump, but he when he talks about fake news, I think. He, he talks about it from the point of view of things said about him that are fake, which aren't necessarily mm. fake, but I think he's got a point about fake news. And I think when something is repeated on social media a number of times, people start to believe it because yeah. it's passed on that many times. So I think we get young people not really um, being selective in their understanding or, or questioning what they hear because they read something and they assume that it's the yeah. truth and therefore that becomes their version of the truth. So I think we've got... We've got young people who are less able to look at news and to be, um, uh, I can't think of that, to be... They uh, don't interpret it, they just follow yeah, it. Well, they, yeah, they do. They, they don't interpret it. They don't think there might be another viewpoint here. They don't look at things from different points of view. They just accept what they hear the first time round. And from an English point of view, that can be dangerous because you're losing that, that ability to be able to question and, and mm -hmm. to, to think through different issues. Okay, so what age would you allow your children to use social media? Um, if I had complete choice, I wouldn't allow them to use social media. Like, never? No, because I think it's so dangerous. I think it, it sets up so many issues, so many concerns. There's been a lot of reports recently about social media um, causing more depression, more loneliness, more people feeling that, that they're comparing their lives to other people's lives. Because, of course, what people put on social media is the, like, the highlights of their lives, yeah. the best bits of their lives. and. You can sit at home and use social media and think, oh, everyone else has got this fantastic life. They're going out, they're doing these things, they're going to interesting places, and I haven't been out this weekend. So that increases that sense of social isolation, particularly for young people. So I think initially it was a way of people being able to reach out to each okay, other. Yeah. But I think now it actually reinforces that sense of loneliness and isolation. And people just having contact through social media are not real life face-to-face -face contact. And I think it's actually gone past, it's got, it, it, it has reached a, a critical point now of it being a destructive thing for young people rather than a constructive thing for young people. If social media was around when you were a bit younger, a lot younger, 
when you were <laughs> small. Then, do you think it like hadn't have an impact on you? Would it have changed you? I think so. Yeah, definitely. So now, I mean, I, I'm not as I'm probably not as bad as guys. Um, I I probably go onto Facebook for an hour a day at different points during the day, and I'll sit there and I'll be watching TV and I'll you know I'll be looking at my phone or just before I go to bed, always there's something else I need mm. to check. And I'm sure I'm not as obsessive about it as some young people. Yeah. But when I was when I was your age, I would read a lot. I would go out. I'd see my friends. We'd spend a lot of time around each other's houses after school. And I think that doesn't happen as much because you can go home and you can still have connection. Um, you can be Skyping each other, you can be Snapchatting and all of those things, so you feel like you, you're, you're getting together, but, you're, but really you're, not. you're not. And I think, so literacy levels are going down, I think people are reading less, I think they're doing less homework, they're getting distracted, they're not focused on the work they're doing because there's always something else that they want to focus on at the same time. So I think for me, it would have, if I, when I was your age, if there was social media, I would have gone out less. I would have done fewer things, I did a lot of music, I did a lot of dance, a lot of drama, probably would have done fewer of those things. Um, I certainly wouldn't have read as much, I wouldn't have gone out as much. And that has an impact in all sorts of ways, mental health as well as physical health. Thank you for your help. You're very welcome.